Can you hear me? Yes, hi. Okay. Uh, let me try let me try Mary can see if it's there. Okay. So how do I pronounce your name? I'm sorry. My name is uh, John. You just call me John. My name is Mandungu Mandende. Okay, I can call you John. Okay, John. Yeah, I can call me John, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, he's, he's connecting himself now. No, oh, that's okay. What time is he over there? Uh, it's 6 p.m. for me. 6 p.m., all right. And for you? Uh, it's 1.35. In the afternoon. Oh, okay. So you have the same time as uh, American Canada, right? No, no. Ours is a day. Oh apart. no. Okay. Uh, yeah, American Canada. You like you know same time as uh, as uh, probably Australia, I think. No, even Australia is a bit. Uh, uh, I think behind or ahead by four hours. Really? Oh, right. Yeah. So you guys are five hours ahead. Five and a half. Five and a half hours ahead, yeah. All right. So how's been your week? Um, you still working in um, the cybersecurity team, cybersecurity industry? Yes, 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 John. I uh, work in stuff. cybersecurity industry. It's been more than uh, eight years now. All right. Okay, good. Yeah. Good. So, uh... hello, everyone. Sorry, I was a bit late. Hey, American, it's okay. We yeah. didn't start yet. Yeah, I Sivaste. How do you say how you pronounce your name? Sivaste? Just call Siva. like you can just call me yeah, Siva, that's it. Uh, Siva, Siva, yeah, that's easy. Yeah. That's easy. Uh, that's yeah. Cool. yeah, that is easier. Yeah. yeah. Uh, thank you. So how are you guys doing? American and John. How was yeah, your week? Personally, uh, I'm fine. I'm just happy to start this course and hopefully we will enjoy it. Yeah. And uh, yes, yes. Course, we may progress to another level. Uh, yeah. Cloud security, as we spoke last time. And then from there, we will see, from then, we will see what to do next. Yeah, same same as myself, right? So, um, you know, very, very, because we know, we know uh, Amit, you know, we know Amit, and a uh, few friends have, have gone through uh, other trainings with him so as you know i kept in touch with him for for some times and uh, when i saw the uh, the training on um you know on his website so i was like you know let's just you know let's just do it and um what you um you explained to us the last time was very very interesting so yeah. we're really looking forward to um to go through this training and um you know to grasp the um you know all the concepts and uh, hopefully to uh, move to another level to pass the, to pass this cert certification and then to move up to another level because that's the uh, the area where we really want to um you know to get the experience and then to um you know to go deeper into so we're looking forward and very happy very good very wonderful um, that's a that's a good uh, thing to start with because see if you don't have clarity about where you want to proceed or where you want to go, right? And uh, there is no expectation, let us say, you are simply going in a boat without uh, any direction, simply sitting in a boat and going along the way. So good that you guys are excited and I'm happy that you guys are uh, very much into uh, the mode of learning the whole thing uh, as it is, for example, see there are uh, uh, there are a lot of ways okay there are a lot of ways where you can learn a thing right for example you want to learn uh, driving a car right or you want to learn um, uh, riding a horse right there are many different ways you can watch youtube videos uh, you can go join an academy 
you can actually learn uh, by yourself uh, by simply trying it yourself without following anybody and then invent a new way all all possible or you can like get in touch with somebody who really has an experience in all those mm -hmm. things and who does the you know uh, who does the job easy for you correct mm -hmm. so the path which you have selected is the last one which i spoke about that is how exactly you are going to basically learn uh, becoming a, a cyber security expert yourself correct mm -hmm. so there are multiple things okay see the subject unlike any other uh, subject in the market cyber security is really vast and uh, you need to be thorough uh, with so many things and you need to know what is important and what is not important uh, for example, if you go ahead and then start learning a topic online, uh, you might end up sp uh, spending a lot of time in a domain. You might as well get some good knowledge. Uh, but at the same time, you need to also understand what is your goal. For example, my goal is to get a job in cybersecurity. Then you need to really understand what are those things which are very important from the, uh, from the industry point of view. Correct? So mm -hmm. there are a lot of certifications, not only CEH, there are a lot of certifications where they will be focused on a lot of theory, a lot of deviation. Uh, there will be people who will be talking about malware, malware analysis, uh, which is all a complete different thing when we consider uh, a particular, let us say, one of the profiles that I am working on is called as application security. So in application security, malware analysis doesn't have any role to play. So how is that going to help me become an application security expert? Uh, am, I, am I making a point here, right? Mm -hmm. So it is important. It is important in the sense that malware analysis is one of the important things in cybersecurity. But is malware analysis important for me to clear this certification? Or is malware analysis really important for me to get into job for that profile that I'm looking for? So here is where you will be able to judge what is important and what exactly is not important as far as we go. Correct? Excuse mm -hmm. me, guys. Uh, you keep on. You can keep on talking. I need to restart my laptop. So it's gonna yeah. Go on. Go. On. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So. So actually, let me share my screen. So, okay, let me just. Uh, okay. So, there are a total of 20 modules basically, okay, mm -hmm. which we are going to cover in 30 hours. So, we'll be covering all these modules. Um, Accordingly, so that you guys have pretty much understanding into all the modules of CEH. Okay. At the same time, there is some things that you need to do it yourself also. Like I'm not sure how you guys are planning to write this CEH exam and how you guys are purchasing that coupon, right? Once you are through this course, what I would expect is uh, you guys to basically uh, you I want you guys to basically go ahead and then go through the course materials that CEH will be providing you, which is uh, more important, okay? So mm -hmm. it is like, I'll be giving you the car. I'll be giving you the fuel. I'll be teaching you how to drive, okay? It is yeah. you who should be driving it and who should be learning from driving, right? So mm -hmm. I'll be taking care of all these things, but ultimately you have to use the accelerator yourself, right? So today in this session, what we are going to do is uh, try to go over the first CEH. Uh, let me just. Uh... Okay, so we'll try to go over this introduction to ethical hacking, which is the first module. Okay, and uh, we'll try to cover uh, most important things in this module. And we'll try to see how exactly it is going to help us. So it is 6.15 now. And uh, we are going to uh, 
cover this class. Uh, we, we are going to have a class till 8, uh, uh, 8 p.m. in IST, which is another one hour, 45 minutes of time. There will be a 10 minute break in between. OK, John, uh, for a just refresher. And uh, okay. let us get started. So this, ob uh, the, this module objective is basically to give you the overview of current security trends, understanding the elements of information security. Uh, this is my favorite topic, okay? Elements of information security is like where we'll discuss exactly what we are going to learn and understanding information security threats and attack vectors, overview of hacking concepts, and then uh, uh, types and phases also. What are these hacking concepts? What are the different types? What are the different phases? Understanding ethical hacking concepts and scope, overview of information security controls, overview of penetration testing, overview of information security acts and loss. So not to worry, uh, we'll be going uh, in detail about all these kind of things. So information security overview. So what exactly is information, right? If you look at, um, for example, let us consider uh, 100 years ago, correct? 100 years ago, what used to happen? People used to uh, uh, write on books uh, using hardly pencils, right? Uh, we used to use pencils basically. Uh, oh, okay, I need to submit, okay. Yeah, sorry, American, uh, I did not uh, see that. Okay, are you in, American? He's just yeah, he's in, I think, yeah. He's in okay. already. Yeah. He's in already. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, American. Uh, I did not see that. It's on different screen. Okay. So see, uh, hundred years ago, people used to write on papers, right? Pens. Hardly, uh, hardly there used to be something called as pens, right? Uh, people used to have pencils, papers, and there used to be hardly any press also. So there was no printing material or anything like that, and people used to rely on hard copies and writing on the uh, piece of paper and all that stuff basically so when you talk about uh, when you basically talk about you know uh, let us uh, when you basically talk about let us say uh, the information it was hardly about the information which is pertaining to the books uh, or uh, uh, you know papers basically but during 1970s 1960s Slowly, what revolutionized the computers was not the IT industry, software industry, or all these kind of things, right? Earlier, what revolutionized computers was banking industry because of the calculations, storage of information, who is withdrawing money, who is adding money to the bank account, all these kind of things. So this particular uh, this particular uh, uh, thing about uh, this particular thing about a particular uh, information or the system which automates certain tasks has guaranteed that yes, information can be created over computers. So during 2000, uh, internet was a boom. Everybody came onto the internet. Everybody wanted to join internet. Everybody wanted to make sure that internet, uh, they want to exploit internet, make use of internet, download some things, read some things. Uh, they want to post some things, do business online. So what happened? Everybody started producing a lot of information. But who is the caretaker of this all this information, right? Who is going to make sure that all this information is safe and secure? So that's where you actually have, uh, that's where you actually have what is called as uh, the information security, okay? So the information security is all about where you protect the systems you protect the information from being disclosed or from being exploited by the people or hackers who are bad guys, right? So the information security overview is nothing but, so the business reputation, you call it the customers, all these kind of things, right? So the finances, the brand reputation, the customers, all these kind of things will actually uh, be covered by, by the, information security principles so for example you understand that there is a bank and there is an account on the account, account holder so this particular account nobody should be able to break into this account and then steal the money 
there should be certain controls there should be certain username passwords there should be some ways to be authenticate some card details your cvv details your password your one time password right all these kind of things are very important which forms this particular information security as a whole can you see like what exactly like how much of uh, data or how much of data that is actually being used youtube whatsapp google wordpress email netflix snapchat whatever we do from day in the morning 6 am till 11 pm in the night everything is revolving around computer and the internet mm -hmm. but if you look at the kind of number of people who are skilled individuals in cyber security it's very minimal mm. okay the demand is growing like crazy for example in my own organization also we are trying to recruit two good cyber security experts but for the past 6 months we are not able to find good senior resources there are people who have learned who have done that who had seen this who had read that but there is hardly anybody who really understands cyber security and who really understands how exactly you can protect uh, you know you can actually work uh, in the industry as per the expectations of the industry okay so some of the terminologies that you should be like uh, 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 knowing about so hack value so like you know so it's like you are trying to go to a mountain try to hit a rock for two days and come back home and then sleep uh, uh, tired what is the use of it nothing but you go to a forest you collect like you know a lot of fruits come back and then share or sell those fruits there is a value to it so hack value means whatever the value that you are gaining by hacking that is called as hack value and the keyword vulnerability vulnerability means it's about uh, the weakness in the application or the system for example i'll tell hey john your software is having 10 vulnerabilities so what is this 10 vulnerabilities 10 bugs 10 defects 10 weaknesses that is called as vulnerabilities okay and then we have something which is called as exploit exploit means what breaching what is exploiting hey why are you exploiting a old person hey why are you exploiting me with selling this above the mrp price maximum retail price the price is only 10 dollars why are you sell, trying to sell it to me for 20 dollars why are you exploiting me so exploit means whatever these 10 bugs in the john software if i am going there and then trying to make advantage then that is called as exploit clear mm. exploit what what i am exploiting i am exploiting these 10 different vulnerabilities in the software payload right so payload means it's pa it's a subset of this exploit okay we'll understand that in future uh, payload means is a subset of exploit where exactly uh, you are going to learn about uh, uh, where exactly you are going to basically uh, learn about how exactly you are going to uh, run something for example uh, let us say that there is a, a bank okay there is a bank and uh, there is a problem with the username password form so i want to send some uh, dummy data to this username and password so whatever dummy data i am sending here to that username and password is called as payload okay clear it's like bullet in a gun so how am i going to exploit these 10 bugs tell me i need to use some something right a piece of code or technique or something right directly i cannot simply go ahead and then exploit this right that whatever we are using as a, a button to kill is called as payload this is payload so i'll show you in uh, explanation in detail later then we have what is called as zero day attack zero day attack means an attack that actually have hasn't happened before or an attack which doesn't have a solution for example uh, in google i found that there is a bug and i can read anybody's email and this particular set of bug was not introduced earlier this attack whatever i am attacking in google so that attack is called as zero day attack okay clear and this attack doesn't have any solution till now for example alien suddenly invades alien suddenly comes on to earth 
that is zero day okay a cyber security attack which was unprecedented is it clear yeah. any doubts till till now any doubts in hack value vulnerability exploit payload zero day mm, not really not at the moment for me okay okay cool american are you able to get it please don't know if his mic is off or something yeah he's on mute i don't know like if he might be away it's okay okay yeah cool. yeah sorry yeah uh, yeah i'm listening yeah uh, i understand what you say okay wonderful Hi. right so uh, dicey chaining is another thing basically okay so dicey chaining is uh, uh, something uh, where uh, you know you are going to get access to the network or a computer and using the same uh, network access you are trying to log into different computers for example let us say uh, american is working for uh, a bank okay or he is working for interpol right let us say he is working for interpol as a police officer so i somehow stole american's username and password for his computer so i can go into interpol office anywhere and use that username and password in any computer possible that is allowing me to log into any computer that is called as dicey chaining making sense because one i am using in a chained manner in different ways in different things okay and then doxing is something where like i steal john information and uh, so i am going to uh, post john information on hackers platforms selling his information hey john's credit cards are these so i am going to give you give it to you for 5000 dollars so if you pay me 5000 i'll give you john's credit card information that's it that is called doxing bot bot is actually for example let us see something okay can okay, can i ask a question please uh, see yeah yeah go ahead america uh, yeah about the 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 dash uh, ch- uh, chaining mm. so if someone get access to one network or computer how can can he use the same login access and go and uh, connect to other network yeah so no but if the network is let's say different network but the user does the same user use the same login for when he try to log into other different network or i don't know how can you explain that please? see let's it's say, about let's it's... Say, Yeah. Let's say uh, you can log into network. So I use your login to log into the not the network we usually use or you usually log into. So how can I take that information, so your login details, and go and use them in, in, in any other different network? So that means that you use the same login that you use, let's say, for to log into the uh, network A. you use the same login to go and log into the network b so what happens is what you are asking is a bit straight forward okay see you are asking whether i can log in to my uh, whether i can log in to my instagram like let us say uh, what account i could international um so icici bank i'm not sure if you have it so whether i can log in using facebook password to log into icici bank correct that's your question yeah okay see listen what happens is there are different scenarios in this uh, in this whole thing okay for example uh, let us say you are logging in from facebook to icici but what is the pro- pro- process you are doing tell me you are directly going to their website and entering the facebook credentials which is going to fail ultimately that is not how it works but what i am doing i got john's computer pass username and password i take john computer username and password i go into his house i log into his computer i log into his computer inside his computer i see there is a text document with username and password for icici bank i take uh, for icici bank i take that icici bank username and password and i go to icici bank i log in there and it is asking me for card details 
I stole John's uh, wallet. I take John's wallet, and I take uh, his card details. I enter ah, there. Okay. I I stole his phone. So I got the OTP. I go ahead and then uh, enter the OTP in the website. Transfer whatever amount I want. Now you are able to uh, 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 feel the whole chaining. Okay. Yeah. I understand that. Yeah. Okay. All right. Right. Yeah. So that's the daisy chaining. Like from one, how are you going to go into the next level of chain of events? Okay. Okay. Uh, so we, any 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 more doubts? Uh, for me, no. It's uh, it's, it's pretty clear. Cool, no, it's cool. Fine now. Thank you. Okay. So now we are at the bot, right? For example, let us say uh, American is having ten computers. Okay. Uh, he's he's running a company. Let us say American uh, is actually uh, he's actually running a. Car. uh different uh, company it software company and he is having 10 computers 10 people will come they'll use the computers and go back home so what john is doing john identified that american uh, john identified a loophole in american network he went there he installed something which is malicious or malware or a bad software onto all these 10 computers from online he just installed a uh, virus or malware related software and that software what it is doing is it is uh, it is doing whatever john wants to do for example uh, have you guys heard about crypto mining cryptocurrencies cryptocurrency blockchain hello yeah sorry what did you say did you guys hear about uh, blockchain cryptocurrencies Yeah, you know, if I uh, keep talking currency, yes. Yeah, yeah so, so you need to mine, okay. right? You need to use some system resources. You need to mine yeah. some uh, uh, cryptocurrencies. All yeah, that. Yeah, blockchain, uh, crypt cryptocurrency. Yeah. So what uh, that requires a lot of computer resources, right? Yes, it does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that computer resources, this hacker, let us say John, doesn't want to use of his own. He went for American's ten computers. He installed a malware. and he is using this hardware all the 10 computers hardware and he is mining cryptocurrencies with uh, american undetected uh -huh. making sense yeah so that is called as bot these computers when they are under control of john are called as bots uh -huh. botnets to be more precise uh -huh. it is botnets clear mm -hmm. okay so let us go forward next thing very important thing is called as elements of cyber security okay so uh, elements of information security or cyber security so basically it's very important for you to understand all most these five things okay you have to remember it night in day out okay so confidentiality means for example john's username and password to facebook okay that is confidential information that means unauthorized disclosure of john username and password to anyone will be an impact of confidentiality what is the use the term i am using the term i am using is unauthorized disclosure clear yeah. that is called as confidentiality impact okay next uh, integrity i went and then i changed john uh, facebook profile picture okay mm -hmm. me i hacked into john's account and i changed john's profile picture that is unauthorized change isn't it yeah that is called as integrity failure of integrity okay next you booked your holiday on let us say i don't know like what websites you are familiar in india make my trip is very popular uh, go iba bo this kind of uh, websites so which which websites you use for travel booking um, you know booking.com oh booking.com okay recently i saw an ad in tv 
okay so booking.com you purchased uh, like you wanted to go to uh, so john where do you want to, where do you want to go for a trip let us say uh, john, for a trip um, i want yeah. to go to, i want to go to uh, i want to go to canada wow okay so john <laughs> want to go to canada and uh, john purchased like a whole trip right uh, booking.com you went and purchased hotels tickets everything you did for 10 days so john uh, takes leave from his office uh, 10 days leave and then he goes to the airport and there in the airport the uh, you know the reception people will the ticket booking people will be asking hey john where is your ticket and john will go to booking.com app and then app doesn't open app says error occurred the app is not working he tries to go to uh let us say his uh, booking.com website in his laptop the website doesn't work are you able to sense what i'm mm -hmm. saying availability yeah. so yes yeah, yeah. The availability yeah, yeah the availability of the software or service is not working yeah that is an impact on availability okay john's username and password stolen or disclosed publicly that means unauthorized disclosure confidentiality impacted then integrity okay integrity means john's profile picture on facebook is changed without uh, permission integrity impacted john's booking.com site is not responsive so john had to cancel 10 days of uh, canada plan availability is impacted then authenticity okay authenticity means so american goes to john and then says hey i am american i was your childhood friend so i have been i i know you i have been following you in facebook but uh, uh, right now i just want to come and come back to you and introduce myself but how will john know that american is actually his childhood friend or not right then american will show him like this is my identity card and this is how you can check it clear hmm. authenticity non repudiation so american says hey john i came uh, john calls uh, what is this courier name called uh, dhl yeah uh, john calls dhl and then says hey i did not receive the package uh, that my friend uh, amit has sent where is my package then um, dhl guys simply america calls american who is a delivery boy and american says i de uh, i delivered i delivered the package at his door and i came back he was not at home john was not at home so i came back but how will uh, now how to verify tell me what are your ideas guys john and uh, uh, american how will, how will i verify if uh, american has actually delivered it at the doorstep or not um you know normally you have to um, have somebody sign sign for it no let us say there is no sign for it and there was nobody okay. and there is a, according to the policy you can drop at the door and come back okay if nobody is there right. like yeah. a picture ah yeah okay like a picture okay good very good what else no but sometimes you may take a picture and then you are the only person taking the 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 item ah okay all right yeah Silly. yeah yeah you so are taking the picture and you are taking it back <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. So I think the best way to prove is when you take a picture, you see also the guy who's taking the 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 item from you. So we, we when you yeah, go and knock, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, but the, yeah, but the thing is, you know, there's nobody there. You understand? So uh, if there's no one there, I I I've done delivery. The only way, as you say, we had just no, no, that is not an option. American, no, that's not an option. You have to deliver, and yeah. I want to track. It's very easy, guys. Come on, use uh, use a bit of uh, common sense here. What, what how do people police track when there is a robbery it is track police... like you know no what do they see what do they track they track you know they have like cameras and uh, they have ah. like you know yes so they can, hey, yeah they can yeah. track the cctv camera right cctv yeah yeah they can check if that person of the house has installed a cctv camera and then check it yes. yeah yeah so if it is recorded in cctv camera let us say that american has delivered it is there any way that with that record can anybody say that you haven't delivered anymore no that means it's a guaranteed delivery that's yeah. what is written here
guarantee the sender of a message cannot later deny having sent the message and that he the recipient cannot ah, deny yeah. having received the message mm. that is not repudiation clear okay yep i hope this slide is clear for you we can enjoy yeah sure yeah. Yeah, yeah yeah that's yeah. fine are you guys like just a, yeah yeah sure just the question are we going to get the uh, the the um, you know the document as well yeah yeah i'll share it with yeah. amit yeah sure okay no worries, that's yeah. fine that's fine yeah thank you no worries no worries so security functionality and usability triangle okay i'll tell you something okay uh so i'll go to bank and i'll say hey you guys your uh, bank is uh, nonsense it's uh, it's a full of nonsense and it's useless um like i feel your security controls are very bad so i really find it really really uh, i don't really like to uh, transact with your bank anymore so can i simply like go to another bank then uh, let us say i am siva i am the banker okay so let us do some role play here okay the role play is like um so uh, john you ask me questions okay so you are you are, i am playing the bank uh, role of a banker okay john uh, you mm -hmm. have to talk like uh, a disappointed customer who doesn't like to transact with my bank okay bank name is siva bank uh, because you don't feel the security is good so now tell me hi sir hi john how are you uh, what is the problem uh yeah i'm not i'm not happy because uh i'm not happy because i you know um i got some money some money taken from my account and i didn't get any any anybody to call me to let me know and then you know you promised me when i opened my account that my account was going to be secure so now i'm not happy and i want to um close my my account from from your bank okay okay sir okay john uh, we understand your request so now that uh uh we understand from the system that it is a mistake from our side bank side so whatever the 10000 us dollars you have lost uh, we are trying to we will we will pay you that money back if in that case uh, if we uh, advance our security will you try to stay back with us uh to be honest with you this is not the first time it happened so um i gave you a, a, you know a chance and this is this is the third time it's, it's happened so I'm going to close my account and uh, move to another one where I can feel more secure. Okay, where you want to feel more secure. Uh, but yeah. please give us a chance once, okay? One more time, okay? We'll, okay, return, return, we'll return, yeah, we'll return all your money. Uh, just give us one more chance, okay? Okay, now uh, um, I like next time John will come back to Siva. Uh, after three months okay now yeah. siva will be uh, uh, siva will be having uh, american who american is a security person uh, who is trying to make the bank uh, who is more trying secure. to make yeah bank more secure so american will come he works hard for three months he does this that everything and then he makes it more secure and then now uh, john will again come back to siva and ask hey is your bank more secure and now siva will say yes so nobody can break into my bank uh, my bank is the secure most secure bank in the world then american will ask oh that's great so how what do i how do i use this uh, more secure uh, banking uh, software then siva will say so now you ask me john come on you ask me that question how do i enroll into this uh, thing okay yeah you know since this this um you know this application that you install so how would i use this um um this application for um you know for my account to uh to feel more secure how can you explain yes, to me? It, yes definitely john it's like uh, we have worked so hard and our security lead american has worked so hard and uh, we are here to uh, basically give you uh, the best experience so what we have in offer is when you log into the app, the first thing you have to do, you have to place your fingerprint. After that, you will be asked for a retina scan. After that, it will ask for a OTP. After that, it will ask for a card number. After that, it will ask for your account number. After that, it will ask for uh, one uh, video which you have to record. After all these levels, after you clear all these levels, then only you will be able to send money or receive money. How does this sound, John? 
um pretty you know it sounds pretty good pretty good comparing to um you know comparing to what i what i had before <laughs> but will you be able to log in 10 times no no that's no, no, that's 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 too long it's too long too long you know too long yeah you so that is the problem here that is yeah. what is this whole slide about so yeah. this usability factor is gone down but system is secure yeah nobody can it's break it it's just too long yeah yeah so you have to understand that you are meeting the functional need of the software you have to understand that you are meeting the security needs of the software you have to understand this whole triangle is coming back to the usability so that the security and the functionality is also ensured Does that making sense mm. yes so that's how the usability factor is plays a very crucial role in security because see you you might be a educated person you are using the software what about person who is like not so educated not so educated yeah. in the sense not so aware mm. about using the application will they be thrown away forever from using the application no right you mm. have to give the same security or offering to the educated person to the farmer as well right mm, mm, mm. so information security threats and attack vectors so you need to have three different things okay uh, for example if i want to cook what i need i need some groceries i need a stove to cook uh, i need a person to eat right all these three things so for an attack to happen you need to first have a goal what is what can that goal be that goal can be either let us say that goal can be for example steal money uh, damage somebody reputation okay these kind of things okay and what is the method are you going to break into bank directly or are you stealing from online that is the method and vulnerability that bank also need to have some weakness right without weakness how will you go and rob you will be caught you will be trying robbing and uh, there will be some system which will track you which will trace you and you will be caught correct correct so with in mm -hmm. conjunction with all these things only a successful attack will be able to be possible clear mm. okay so that is one thing so what are some of the goals disrupt business continuity performing information theft manipulating data creating fear and chaos by disrupting critical infrastructures bringing financial loss to the target propagating religious or political beliefs achieving states military objectives damaging reputation of the target taking revenue demanding ransom okay so these are some of the things basically uh, that are out of the goals any doubts in here no 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 not for me okay so some of the attack vectors and uh, that are part of it cloud computing attacks you know uh, basically where uh, when the resources are hosted online what is cloud cloud means you instead uh, you are not caring about the physical infrastructure and you are placing all your uh, applications or resources on to the internet somewhere hosted by somebody like amazon aws have you guys heard about aws yeah aws yeah aws, AWS. Azure, yeah. Azure. Yeah, yeah. it's on web yeah okay yeah. Web, yeah. so whatever whenever you keep some like applications or your data on aws so there is a certain different uh, set of threats uh, uh, that are available for that kind of uh, target okay that kind of a target network is it clear mm. why i am saying this tell me why why i am saying it's a different target network because the whole architecture is different no a website is different a mobile application is different a cloud computing is different so whenever you are changing different platforms your attack surface and the kind of attack that you will be able to do will be also different clear yes so that's what it is okay cool now let us go into okay next is advanced persistent threat okay 
now john attacks american and uh, american's computer is attacked like 10 computers let us say okay american attacked john 10 computers now what did i tell you this attack is gone unnoticed right john did not realize that his computers are attacked right okay mm. that particular software which went untracked or unreported is called as advanced persistent threat clear uh -huh. that is called as advanced persistent threat that means a threat has been there for so long but it went unnoticed uh -huh. okay that is called as mm. advanced persistent apt, APT. okay Threats. yeah viruses and worms like they are like infection sources we'll discuss later uh, ransomware you attack somebody and then you change encrypt i yeah and ask for money yeah, the, encrypt yeah. as in all the john's data all his uh, word documents all his driving license software files whatever files he had about uh, digital format all those things i'll edit uh, encrypt and then keep it in some format let us take for example let me show you my so can you see this zip format okay this is a zip format correct mm -hmm. so that is what it is a different format right this one the first folder so like this when you encrypt the attack and then encrypt somebody's software or somebody's computer they will be coming into this kind of format which you cannot decrypt so john will come open his computer all his files look this like, like this so american will send an email hey i hacked your computer and i encrypted all the files so if you want to if you want these files to be decrypted you have to pay money clear mm -hmm. let me show you one good example which happened recently let me stop sharing and try to find that link once okay because that's very good very good link but i missed it actually let me just check okay Ah, oh, see this. Then Bernardino County pays one point one million dollars ransom over sheriff's department hack. Okay. Hmm. it's a police department paying ransom for some hackers is it making sense guys is it making any sense mm. yeah 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 ransom 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 you know uh, yeah so nobody is uh, <laughs> nobody is safe in this world nobody is safe yeah yeah okay ransomware and mobile threats like whatever the threats that are actually focused on the mobile uh, platform basically those are called as mobile threats okay and uh, so some of the information security vector attack vectors botnet i have already spoke to you guys about uh, insider attack means 
john is already working let us say uh, like uh, shiva is already working for amit and amit organization and shiva steals samit organization uh, uh, private data and then sells online so shiva is an insider and the attack name is called insider attack okay mm. and uh, phishing phishing means i'll send john an email hey john you have won 1 million dollars click on this link and john clicks on that link and uh, malicious software downloads to his computer and uh, infects his computer simple okay that is called phishing okay and then you have web application threats so web application threats um, are nothing but whatever the website related attacks that takes place okay website related attacks that takes place that is called as web application threats and then you have something which is called as iot threats which is internet of things uh, threats so internet of things threats are nothing but you know you have like uh, these time these days there is there are uh, um uh, these time uh, you know uh, these days there are like automated uh, uh, switching off of uh, you know bulbs fans when people are not there those kind of things internet of things right mm. where automation in the homes and all are taken clear so all those automation things and the security relating to them is called as uh, internet of things uh, attacks basically and uh, so information security threat categories if you want to talk about so the first thing that we have to talk about here is nothing but the information uh, like you know uh, network threats the first one is information gathering so what is this information gathering basically uh, if you go down the attacks on a system so let me deal here and then we can proceed okay so information gathering means we will be discussing that in detail but later but just understand information gathering means you want to rob a bank and all the related information that you will be gathering about where the bank is located what kind of uh, uh, things that are there for the bank what are the cctv cameras that are available in bank all those kind of things will be part of uh, the bank uh, uh, related attack that that process where you gather the information about the banking details is called information gathering and then you have something which is called as sniffing and eavesdropping so sniffing and eavesdropping means sniffing means uh, john is talking to american and uh, shiva is listening through tapping of the call that is sniffing and eavesdropping means the same thing almost where uh, you will be looking into what is happening between two or more people and uh, trying to look into a group of people trying to do something right eavesdropping or uh, trying to steal that particular uh, private transaction spoofing spoofing means john is trying to act like american right john goes ahead and then puts a face mask and looks like american somewhere that is spoofing session hijacking and man in the middle attack session hijacking means how exactly you are going to uh, take over other people session for example uh, john is connected to uh, let us say uh, airport wifi uh, in that airport wifi what is happening john is connected to airport wifi not air he is thinking it's a airport wifi but it's not airport wifi it's a hacker wifi so hacker just uh, and, uh, and then connecting to hacker wifi john logins to his bank account and the hacker grabs the john's bank account details and ultimately uh, hacker will be able to log into john's account okay so that is called as session hijacking mm -hmm. man in the middle attack means john is trying to connect to the bank server but uh, there is one person who is in the middle of the network who will steal whatever the information that is going on instead of sending money to american john uh, shiva will uh, hack into john's account and then send the money to shiva's account okay that is man in the middle attack so we will be discussing these all these uh, uh, topics in detail as we go along so let us park this aside for now and go into the next part okay types of attacks on its system so you have operating system attacks okay 
uh, which is based on the laptop operating system and misconfiguration attacks means for example i am configuring my server or website in a certain way but i am not taking all the precautions that needs to be taken in order to uh, install it properly so i missed some configuration step that is misconfiguration application level attacks means whatever happens at the application level not the network level for example john 10 computers the attack was not on one computer right it was on the 10 computers that means that's a network level attack but application level attack means it's only on one particular application facebook youtube or something like that that attack happens shrink wrapped code attack right that means uh, depending on Uh, some of the default configurations if i know that every company which is using a particular software is using it in a certain way and i found that there is a loophole in that certain way then i can simply go ahead and then attack that okay such kind of attack is called as shrink wrap code attacks clear mm. okay and why we left that uh, slide which i was showing before because of the simple reason uh, i cannot like show simply and then talk about this dns and arp poisoning compromised key attack privilege escalation these are some things which are needed to be discussed uh, with more content and more time okay so we okay. will go into that particular topics in future and we'll take care of that there okay okay yeah that uh, that is more you know reasonable that way okay so let us take a break we hit one hour mark okay so okay let us break for 7 minutes and i'll just come back okay yeah take a break for right. uh, yep okay guys I'll see you, you in 7 minutes yeah All bye right. bye Okay, so guys, um, whenever I am going a bit speed, and whenever you guys feel like you are not catching up, please let me know then and there, and I will try to slow down a bit. Okay. Okay. Cool. So there, see, every um, just because the police department. Just because the police department. wants to protect the people will they not learn violent techniques they just want to defend right they just want to protect somebody right so uh, so because of that will they will they not learn violent techniques guys yeah still no, there's on there's a question No, no. I'm asking question. Just because the police people are defending the pe people of the country, will they not learn violent techniques? Violent. Yeah, violent technique. How to uh, how to protect people? Ha! Huh, no, that is a defensive technique, na? That's a defensive technique, right? Yeah. So will they will they not learn fighting? 
Police. They will, yeah. Yeah, some of them are into, uh, into martial arts as well. Yes, so why do you think that is required? Because they are ultimately defending the people from attacks, right? So if they learn defense techniques, that is enough, right? Why do they need, mm -hmm. need martial arts, all these things? Why do you think they need that? Because some, some people that they protect, they, um, you know, they are into, um, you know, into uh, sports as well. So they need to know how to protect, to protect themselves too. No, actually, they need to learn violent techniques because in order to be defensive, you want to as well kill somebody else, the attacker. Okay. Right? If there is a person mm -hmm. with a gun entered into a school and started shooting at the children, the police will have to shoot as well, right? But yeah, ultimately, to, yeah. yeah, ultimately, both the police as well as uh, police as well as the this guy, um, the criminal, both of them mm -hmm. are doing the same thing, which is firing. Okay. But both we are doing it for two different purposes. So offensive defensive means something like you need to learn how to break the applications. You need to learn how to protect from the applications also. Clear? Okay. So there is one something which is called as uh, this will come again in future. Command and control warfare means uh, where actually you are going to uh, send the attack, attack, like, you know, the victim, like, for example, I am the victim. My information will be sent back to John's server, who is an attacker. Okay. This server from the attacker is called as C2C. Uh, Siva. Yeah. Yeah, please. So, uh, well, if I understand well, why you were talking about offensive and defensive attack. Uh. So, uh, as a uh as a um cyber security engineer you need to learn how to attack and also you need to learn how to defend yeah uh, okay yes yes that's yeah that was my point yes okay 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 electronic warfare means um it's about how you are going to use the radio electronic signals etc Psychological warfare means where you are going to use techniques like propaganda and uh, false terror information, news channels. Hacker warfare means, you know, uh, where you are going to shut down mass computers or systems in hospitals, uh, railway stations, uh, army, etc. Economic warfare, basically where you target the economic of the country. Cyber warfare, where you have used the uh, hacking techniques to attack some uh, websites and target sites okay and defensive and offensive warfare which we have seen so defensive means you need to learn about prevention detection uh, response to the attacks offensive means some of the techniques where you will use to basically go ahead and then attack the target uh, software target uh, uh, softwares or attacks now let us get into hacking concepts So what is hacking? I already told you guys that exploit is a keyword which is used when it is used against a vulnerability, correct? There has to be a weakness, right? Mm. So exploiting something is nothing but exploiting that particular vulnerability in the target system. That's called as hacking. Okay? And uh, modifying system or application features for the gain of the attacker. Okay. So you attack something and then you just change something like, okay, you wanted to attack a, a bank. You just go to bank's account. Your account has $1,000. You just change that 1,000 to a million number in the bank server and you came back, right? Modifying systems or applications. And uh, hacking can be used to steal, pilfer and redistribute intellectual property leading to business loss as a whole, okay? So that is another thing like hacking also will be able to, um, you know, steal or uh, some of the information or attack and then capture some of the information that's not supposed to be stolen. So who is a hacker? Hacker will have good computer skills. Uh, hacker will have a habit of breaking into systems. Uh, they'll be able to poke into illegal things basically. 
so this is a very important slide guys please focus there are different types of hackers actually black hat hackers means somebody who really are very bad this is the worst category i mean black hat hackers who hacks because they want to hack into the system uh because of false gains like ransomware attack etc white hat hackers are good people uh for example something like i i break into let us say a company called as walmart i found a particular bug in walmart and then i am going to uh report that bug to walmart so that they'll be able to fix that particular bug so that walmart website is safe and secure clear mm. and uh, the white hat is he um employed by walmart or uh... it can be it's a difference between gray hat and white hat white hat is actually okay. employee of uh, walmart or it may not even be employee of walmart it will be ethical hacker who is from outside who is doing some bug bounty i showed you the other day in uh, orientation right bug bounty okay bug bounty okay yeah earning money for finding bugs okay all right okay, okay. so gray hat means usually the kind of people who will be offensive and defensive and who will take money for their effort simple okay so this is it is like in between these two black hat and white hat suicide hackers means they'll know that they'll be caught by doing such activity but still they'll do that <laughs> okay like suicide bomber <laughs> uh, so they script, just doing it for fun then e, no 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 no, no. these just, people will be yeah. having stronger purpose not fun they'll be having very stronger this guy these ones are fun i'll, I'll explain you uh, okay. suicide hackers means they'll be having stronger purpose something mm. like uh, i will go like let us say uh, uh, let's not take any country name but i will go against a country abc and uh, i'll go to their uh, uh, let us say their parliament right i'll go to their parliament connect to their parliament wifi using my laptop and then i hack the whole parliament so to hack i have to be inside the parliament premises so i'll go there and hack hack because i want to terrorize parliament i want to terrorize people okay okay mm -hmm. so my my intention was to terrorize yeah but i know that i'll be caught yeah yeah, yeah. Okay. okay that is suicide so the, what you said was this one just for fun this is the one script kiddies simply they want to just test some tool they want to run some tool against google.com and google will find them in their log and google will come to them and then ask them hey why have you done this what this go legal proceeding all these things will happen so these guys script kiddies will not know what they are doing they simply go ahead and then follow some a uh, step by step process online that's it okay yeah then we have something which is called as cyber terrorist okay so cyber terrorist is something where uh, like it's like terrorists only who terrorize people right motivated religious belief political beliefs all these kind of things who are heavily motivated into attacking and then uh, kind of uh, uh, damaging the uh, damaging the uh, target in terms of uh, reputation or in terms of uh, uh, the peace and the prosperity of the region state sponsored hackers means uh, for example a country doesn't like b country so a country will go to some hacker hey hack their b b website that's it state sponsored hackers hacktivist means an individual who is going to basically an individual who is going to have, have an agenda of hacking uh, especially to basically uh, deface or uh, uh, dismantle or disable some of the websites okay any doubts guys no no awesome so some like hacking phases you look at this one so hacking phases you have something which is called as reconnaissance which is nothing but information gathering then we have scanning then we have gaining access maintaining access clearing tracks what are these things so Siva want to target, let us say, Walmart. 
first thing that Shiva will do is gather information. That is called as reconnaissance. Okay. Then Shiva gathers the information, and then Shiva uses some tools to scan Walmart to find some vulnerability, to find some defect from the scanner. Then Shiva will gain access into Walmart. Shiva want to exfiltrate some one GB of data from Walmart. He'll exfiltrate or he'll transfer that one GB. Shiva doesn't want to get caught, so he'll clear all these tracks. He'll clear the tracks so that even if somebody want to check who has done it, they'll not be able to identify. Is it clear? All the phases of yeah. hacking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's on high level. Okay. We'll discuss tools in that aspect. In each phase, there will be tools. So don't worry. So in scanning phase, you have a pre-attack phase, port scanner, extract information. So pre-attack phase is nothing but uh, uh, where you are going to scan the network for specific information. Port scanner will scan for specific ports and extract information to like you know basically extract the information from the target system. So gaining access. So basically you are going to we'll discuss this step later also where you are going to talk about privilege escalation there are two types of escalations like horizontal privilege escalation vertical privilege escalation data exfiltration uh, stealing the data exporting the data all these things will come again maintaining access is that uh, for example you need access for one week so that you can transfer all the sensitive data then that is called as maintaining the access basically So clearing tracks. Okay. Ethical hacking concepts. So what is ethical hacking? Right? Hacking is okay. You want to do something bad that is understandable. But what is ethical hacking? Ethical hacking means it's about identifying vulnerabilities, right? Identifying bugs, security bugs, identify where there is bugs or not. And then it focuses on stimulating techniques used by attackers, uh, verify the existence of exploitable vulnerabilities in the system security. Uh, ethical hackers perform security assessments of their organization with the permission of concert, concerned authorities. Okay, right? That means I have legal agreement with the target company to attack. Am I making sense? I have permission to attack. Yeah. That is it. Yeah, that is ethical hacking. Yeah. Okay. Why ethical hacking is necessary? See, you like I said, a police personnel need to a police personnel need to a police personnel need to know how to fight how to fire a gun that is necessary isn't it mm -hmm. yeah right that is why ethical hacking also you need to learn how to hack ethically so that you will be able to protect the uh, people you need to be able to protect the computers yeah. right so to prevent the hackers so to prevent the hackers from gaining access to organization information systems to uncover vulnerabilities in systems and explore uh, their potential as risk to analyze strengthen an organization security posture including policies network protection infrastructure and end user practices to provide adequate preventive measures in order to avoid security breaches avoid any security breaches to happen something like we have seen no uh, that uh, US uh, Police Department uh, Sharif case to help safeguard customer data, to enhance security awareness, etc. Why ethical hacking is necessary? So, you know, basically uh, to go into the shoes of an attacker and understand what an attacker can see inside the network, right? 
uh, what can intruder do with what information? Does anyone at the target notice the intruder's attempts to success or successes? Components of information system. Uh, how much effort, time, and money is required to obtain adequate protection? Like to analyze, like how much you have to spend to stay secure, and also to take any information security measures as well. Okay. Mm. So scopes and limitation. So scope is like you can do risk assessment. What kind of risk can be posed? You can do auditing. What is the kind of uh, security posture that is followed? You can do counter fraud. Like you know, you can be prepared with whatever fraud that happens on you. And information security best practices you can be able to take. It is also used to identify risks and highlight the remediation access actions. Some of the limitations are hiring. Like, see, John is running a company of 10 computers, let us say. John cannot run hacking by himself, right? Ethical hacking. He has to hire somebody, right? He has to hire Siva, right? And who is Siva? He is an external person, right? So external person going into John network and then trying to protect John network, which means a risk in itself. Are you able to understand? Mm -hmm. That's a limitation, right? Yeah. You are going to a hacker to stay protected. Right? That's a limitation. So some of the technical skills like, you know, knowledge of operating environments, knowledge of networking, computer expert, knowledge of security areas, highly technical knowledge, and non-technical areas are like ability to learn, strong work ethics, organization security policy should be known, local, local standards and laws, okay? Then we have something which is called as information security controls, something like information assurance. What is uh, information assurance? For example, you might all be knowing what is called as um, uh, health insurance and all that, right? So you'll be having a health policy. So if you get this disease, we'll give you 80% of the uh, total medical expenditure. If it is that disease, we'll be giving you this much of a medical expenditure, all these kind of things. So information assurance is something we are developing local policy process and guidance. Um, so policies will be created, designing network and user authentication strategy, identifying network vulnerabilities and threats, identifying problems and resource requirements, creating plan for identified resource requirements, applying appropriate information assurance controls, performing certification and accreditation, providing information assurance training, etc. So these are two textual in nature. Don't worry much about them, right? Uh, we'll be focusing, like I said in the beginning of the session. We will be focusing on the areas which are more relevant uh, to basically get you guys into uh, the mode of, uh, you know, learning practicals and then uh, implementing those practicals, etc. Okay, network security zoning, uh, internet zone means whatever is available for the internet to basically reach out to or make use of, that is called as internet zone. Internet demilitarized zone, internet demilitarized zone means something where, uh, you know, it is, it, is, it is a zone between internal networks and the internet, that is demilitarized zone. So for example, there is half available in this box to the internet, this is available only for the uh, intranet, that is internal people. Then we have production network zone, right? Production network zone is something where uh, uh, restricted zone, like only a you know, only a set of networks or computers will be able to access. Not everybody. Intranet zone, no heavy restrictions. Only people within the network or inside the organizations can access. 
management network zone is something where uh, you will be having very strict policies and security measures in order to be able to stay protected okay okay this is a very important uh, slide guys okay uh, please focus so you will come here right first you will have to authenticate policy means what you will have to authenticate something uh, to the facebook server username and password then you will go to the physical data center of facebook in california then you will go into the perimeter then internal network is accessed then host is accessed application and then ultimately data right so if you look at it in the reverse order this computer will get the data from the application from the host facebook from the internal network of the facebook then perimeter of the data center then the data center where policies and procedures everything is actually created clear guys mm -hmm. okay but that will happen in a you know sequential sequence yeah in, in few in few seconds like you know it doesn't take time yeah it doesn't take time that's correct yes like rocket speed mm -hmm. just a second guys my monitor is switching on and off just check okay <sighs> okay Yeah, this is a very important slide. Please focus. So access control policy means who has permission to access, right? So rules that control access to the resources, that is access control policy. Then we have something which is called as remote access policy. Remote access policy means something. Okay, if I'm connecting from, let us say Canada, and I usually work for Australia, <laughs> Australian company. So if I'm connecting from Canada, what are the kind of restrictions that I have to go through? What is the policy that I have for the people who access from remotely? Firewall management policy. Like what is a firewall? For example, there is facebook.com here. Facebook.com cannot be accessed in any which way you want, right? There must be some sort of uh, rules and uh, rules. Uh, you cannot run some tool you cannot run some automatic uh, bot to access it some uh, okay so who will stop all these un <clears throat> unwanted access uh, there is something which is called as <laughs> sorry guys Okay, so there is something which is called as firewall. Firewall means it's a software or a device which is sitting in between the user and the actual application, which will ultimately give you the access or block the access according to some rules and policies. Is it clear? Yeah. And then network connection policy. So network connection policy is something where you are basically going to uh, you know, uh, uh, for example, you bought some new software. How exactly you are going to install that software? How exactly you are going to define when you are going to install that software in the network or not? Then we have something which is called as password policy. Password policy means uh, uh, to ensure a strong authentication or password protection on the organization resources. Then we have something which is called as user account policy. User account policy means, you know, uh, how the user accounts can be created, who can create the user accounts, how to process that. Then we have something which is called as information protection policy, right? Information protection policy is something wherein which, how the sensitive and then stored information can be protected. How exactly you can to protect that information. Then we have something which is special access policy. So somebody like a president or prime minister simply want to 
have an access right so they can have a special access something like that depending on uh, granting special privileges for them to access email security policy what are, how your emails in the organizations are governed how uh, what is the policy that is in the place uh, and acceptable use policy how the system resources can be acceptably useful so that is about some of the policies so like privacy policies means don't make sure that your personal password information is not stolen your id card information is not stolen all these kind of things okay and steps to create and implement security policies right so you need to perform risk assessment to identify risks uh, to the organization assets learn from standard guidelines and other organizations uh, include senior management in whatever decisions you are making set clear penalties if somebody is able to break a rule inside your company then there should be penalty uh, so make policy uh, version final version available for everyone and uh, ensure every member of your staff reads signs and understands the policy deploy tools to enforce policies train your employees and educate them about the policy regularly review and update as well So some of the legal implementation and then uh, HR implications, which is not so relevant. So physical threat to security means for the first thing which comes to your mind, guys. What is the first thing? So it is about, uh, you know, the person who is able to, uh, uh, who is basically trying to break into your system, or you know something like floods or earthquake, fire, dust and man-made threats like temper uh, terrorism, wars, explosions, uh, dumpster driving and theft, right? Vandalism, all these kind of things. Okay. So this is very important, guys. Please look at here. Look at here. Risk levels extremely high, medium, low. There is another severity. Severity we'll be dealing with risk or severity that will be coming later. But for now, just understand what is risk. Risk means extremely high risk, medium or low. For example, John uh, is working for Walmart, and then. Uh, John will tell to uh, his manager, hey, I detected 10 vulnerabilities. In these 10, two are very risky. That means if a hacker identifies these two vulnerab uh, vulnerabilities among the 10, he will be able to break <coughs> into the system. So the risk is calculated based on the risk level, as you can see here. Okay. So that is about the risk, basically. And the probability, like, you know, like uh, how the probability is going to make a uh, impact on uh, getting attacked attacked and uh, how that is going to impact uh, the whole uh, application on the network so risk management again risk identification identify the risk assess the risk treat the risk risk tracking risk review uh, review the risk and etc Key roles and responsibilities in risk management. Like these are some roles, okay? Senior management, uh, chief information officer, system and information owners, business and functional managers. Not so technical. Then comes a very important topic, which is called as uh, threat modeling, okay? Mm -hmm. So threat modeling means what? Uh, see, for example, <clears throat> let us say you are building a wall around your house to stop uh, let us say um, dust storm dust storms so you are imagining how the dust storm will look like and what is that dust storm when it comes to the wall the wall should be able to protect you from it 
so this dust storm here is nothing but the cyber attacks clear okay so this threat modeling process is something which will be uh, threat modeling process is something which will be protecting you protecting you from the uh uh protecting you from, from the, the dust, from the dust, dust from the yeah, attack the, yeah yeah but here in threat modeling it will be protecting you from the hacking okay mm. so what are the security objectives what kind of attack you want to prevent depending on that your objective will be defined right so for example i want to prevent a attack called as brute force we'll we'll discuss what is brute force attack later so you will be depending uh, preparing defenses according that and application overview how how exactly the application is going to function like the uh, how the program is going to go how exactly the data is going to flow all that then we have something which is called as decompose uh, uh, the application decompose the application means uh, uh, you know you want to first identify the threats to their bones that means you want to understand how the threats actually work and decompose the application to identify if that threat is possible or not then identify the threats if they are possible or not at all and i and at all identify the vulnerabilities that means if there is any defects or detect, uh, defects in the system or not okay that is called as identifying the vulnerabilities in the system or the weaknesses in the system any doubts guys threat modeling so it's all about no, no. in one line in one line it is like identifying what kind of attacks you want to stop okay mm -hmm. incident management basically is a big topic uh, where when an attack happens how you are going to react to that attack okay that is called as incident handling okay that is called as incident handling okay <clears throat> incident management process like preparing incident handling response for example there is an incident and uh, siva will start uh, creating a incident response sheet detection detect the incident in a tool like splunk we have seen we'll discuss later all those tools what they are and how they work classification and prioritization hey this incident is very important this incident is not so important so check this out this is important incident so let us investigate notification send the notification to the client walmart is your client so let them know that there is an incident containment take necessary action to stop that attack from happening forensic investigation make sure like you are understanding who is behind that attack okay forensic investigation eradication and recovery basically Uh, which is nothing but uh, uh, you are eliminating that particular attack and recover from the attack also, and then post incident activities. Post incident activity. Post incident activities means uh, after the attack happened, what exactly are the activities that you are going to basically uh, uh, take care of? okay so that in i told you about incident management and the different activities right so this is what it is security incident and event management basically and uh, the functions of security incident and event management is log collection log analysis uh, event correlation all we'll discuss these kind of things okay what are these things later uh, but as a whole just understand for example this is facebook right Siva is accessing Facebook. This access information is stored in logs. Are you understanding, guys? Yeah. These logs uh, that Siva accessed Facebook will be sent to a thing called as SIM. S I E M. Security, incident, and event management. In SIM, we'll be writing some rules uh, to detect if this Siva activity. is a good or bad activity some depending on some rules 
is it a good activity or is it a bad activity depending on that activity we will be clarifying whether to go ahead or not whether to uh, react saying that whether it's a good one or it's a bad uh, attempt by shiva depending on that you will be reacting clear Mm -hmm. that is what is this security incident and event management tool is there are tools like uh, splunk qradar and rapid7 which will be uh, uh, working in this direction basically okay <laughs> okay we'll stop here today tomorrow we'll continue with uh, network security controls and we'll try to uh, finish this document and move to the next one okay okay so if i understand um uh siva so it is today is, is you know and, and and tomorrow's session is just mostly to um like you know put some some uh, foundation right foundation, you know, well, i mean yes. like foundation and then yeah. we build up on that like you know uh, more technical things and uh, and the rest yeah yes absolutely so mm -hmm. tomorrow we'll be seeing what is uh, like uh, tomorrow probably we'll be seeing some tools also but i want to request okay. you guys something okay so tomorrow is yeah. there a chance that we can have a lengthier session if you guys are not having any plans to have what we have what lengthy lengthy session what link, what, link. what i mean <clears throat> sorry uh timing uh, uh what timing uh, uh, like it was 1 30 right for you john yeah when you joined yeah so i think uh what time what, ta what, 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 what time uh, 1 pm to 6 pm is IST. better for you 1 pm to 6 pm can we have a five hour session with uh, two breaks uh uh no because uh um i need after four four i won't be available you won't if be available can do that he, before, goes, he goes to church yeah we, like if before, we can do that before four yeah that will be fine before four okay yeah. which time zone you are saying uh, this one um uh, yeah to, today we start at half one but i don't know if you can start earlier so if we no start no like, no no i want to start at 3 uh, 30 uh, actually saturdays i can start uh, between six to eight but uh, sunday I, we can start at 3 30 which was planned before no, to Sunday is not possible to start at that time. 